You are listening to the Revolutionary Love and Resilience Podcast. I'm Shelby Lee, and I am so honored to be here with you today. This podcast bridges the personal and professional, creating space for experts in the wellness and well being field to be both vulnerable and share their deep wisdom from their years of experience. This podcast weaves trauma awareness, inclusivity, and inspiration for every single person to be able to heal, grow, and become who they want to be, to step into their full authenticity and expand their capacity to claim their best lives as they journey through challenges towards revolutionary love and resilience. I want to introduce you to this special episode that's unlike one that I've done so far, because in these important times when so much is going on collectively in the world, I felt like it would be really helpful to share with you what I shared on my Facebook Live today around cultivating shared empathy, fostering genuine connection, and really being aware of various trauma responses and how we can help regulate ourselves, regulate others, and really just bring more understanding and compassion to what folks are going through right now as there is so much stress happening out there in the world. As we know, stress is trauma in many ways. Trauma manifests in this form of stress as well and contraction and There is an incredible amount of collective worldwide stress and contraction going on right now. And so I wanted to take some time because I've seen so many people just giving advice, giving advice, giving advice to really share how we can be with each other in different ways, how we can feel more connected and in our bodies and supported as we're navigating relationships in the world during these times. So I hope you enjoy the episode. And as always, I love to hear the impact of anything that I'm sharing. So please feel free to shoot me an email or a message. Let me know something that you learned here, something that you want to take with you and how you'd like to bring it out into the world. Just arriving. I know there are several people who are looking forward to showing up for a conversation today. I'm Shelby Lee, if you don't know me, (laughs) and if you do, I'm really looking forward to reconnecting, looking forward to connecting with anybody who wants to show up for a conversation like this. So maybe for the next 30 to 45 minutes, uh, we can really take some grounded time together to make space, to make space for a lot of different experiences and some discussion. I'll do some talking. The nature of Facebook Live is a little unfortunate in that it's really set up for me to just talk at you, but I'm going to see if I can make it as interactive as possible (laughs) because I really, really like being engaged with the whole group because there's so much wisdom here that ever and so i love it if all of you just want to keep commenting and keep sharing uh, throughout the course of this call i want all of your questions and i know folks are just starting to show up hi sarah good to see you welcome let's see who else is here oh it's really hard to figure that piece out sometimes um yeah so this, t- my intention behind this time together is that I was really looking around the online spaces and noticing a lot of people in various roles, various caregiving roles or support roles, healer roles, who are just kind of downloading and pouring a lot of advice uh, and all of a sudden it seemed to have become experts <laughs> on everything that's going on. <laughs> um, while I 100% absolutely love that people are offering their gifts, hi Kendra, I something is going on where it's stuck so I can't see 
people's comments and that is not making me very happy. I'm just gonna put a comment in there just to see if somehow it scrolls up. Hmm. That's, this is not gonna be good if I can't see people's comments. Let me just play with this for a second. It seems like it's, it's a little glitchy. I can't even see the comment I just wrote. Huh. Send all of your, your loving kindness, magic power this way <laughs> to see if we can get these comments to open up because I really, I need to be able to see what you're writing. There we go, whatever you did. <laughs> Kendra, Carol, Sarah, your magic. Good job. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> what was I saying? Can somebody really remind me of the last thing that I said? Hmm. Yeah, so the intention <laughs> was I was just seeing that people are just like pouring advice at each other. And while it's super helpful, Carrie, oh, so good to see you. Hi, Eric, as well. I really... I don't want to set this up as a call where I'm doing that too. So I'm being really mindful of balancing how do I offer some thoughts and care around what I'm seeing in the online spaces in relationship to trauma and how I know some, some ways to support trauma can be really, really helpful. Well, at the same time, I'm very aware that I'm like, talking to you as an expert <laughs> so I just want to be really transparent that it feels tricky and layered and so I'm just going to give that caveat and just go ahead anyways and give me all the feedback in the world around that later please but while we we're arriving I would really just love to hear from you and throughout the whole call um, something about your present moment I want to start kind of regulating together right away. I want to know what is your name? Where are you in the world? And maybe if you're up for it, three things you're noticing in this moment, three experiencing experiences you're having. So that could sound like I'm feeling my heart beating, I'm feeling my belly soft, and I'm noticing the sunshine outside. Or it can be, oh, I'm noticing I'm feeling a lot of anxiety. I'm feeling um, like I wish I had more friends around me right now and my body feels kind of heavy. It could be I'm feeling so grateful, life feels better than it ever has been, and I'm feeling a lot of appreciation. Whatever you are feeling in this moment is completely welcome. Just because somebody else is feeling one thing doesn't mean that you need to feel guilty for how you're feeling or vice versa. <laughs> Everybody's experiences here matter and we're a collective and it all balances each other out. So if you're up for it, share your name, share three things that is are three things that you're experiencing in the present moment. My brain just went into a paper jam there. And where you are in the world, I would be so grateful. And I see more and more people are showing up. So part of why I'm asking you to kind of share who you are and what's happening and where you are is that this creates some regulation. We get we start orienting to each other of like who are we surrounded by, what is happening here, and um, who are these people that I'm sharing this space with, and what's happening for them. We can connect. So beautiful, Sarah. Sarah is in Portland, Oregon, loving her new weighted blanket and her breath is shallow, and it's hard to focus. Thank you so much, Sarah. Skylar Jess, Skylar Jess. <laughs> Hi, I feel excited, Skylar says. I feel grateful to see you again, and I'm in Denver. It has been such a long time. My dear friend, Skylar, is so good to hear from you. Uh, and Daniela just showed up. So. We're just gathering, we're arriving, and this is part of how we uh, begin to settle our nervous systems. We don't just shoot right in here and jump right in. So as you're arriving, you can chat in the, in the chat box, a few things that are going well, your name and where you are. You can also take some time and look around your space, wherever you are in the world. 
in your in in your space maybe it's somewhere you've been a thousand times before and maybe it's a brand new space and as you are in this space see if you can look around it with fresh eyes as though you've never ever been in it before and as you allow your space to come to you with soft eyes notice if there's anything in that space you can connect with that feels maybe soothing or pleasant or comforting to connect with and carol i'm seeing that you are here you're in sydney australia it's so good to see you i am noticing the way the morning sun is pouring through the window listening to the birds chattering outside and noticing some tension in my neck and lower belly welcome i'm glad you're here carol and anaya it's good to see you hi beauty and grace in denver feeling sick pain and sacral root and peaceful yeah welcome grace it's so good to have you here from denver and carol from los sorry kendra <laughs> hi kendra from los angeles i feel skittish and unfocused i feel a lightness in my heart seeing you hearing you laugh and a dull ache in my head and i'm going to read one more but hopefully they will just keep coming hi maria welcome and laura laura hi <laughs> welcome laura lives in reno and she's feeling the energy flowing from her belly all the way up to the front of her neck and it feels good so i notice as i read people's hellos and where they are and what's happening for them no matter if it's pleasant or unpleasant or neither i'm able to access my own experience a little bit more i'm able to feel a bit more dropped into my body into my place into where i'm being and so it helps me a lot to really get to know and get curious about what's going on for other people and part of what i wanted to talk about today are how do we actually foster genuine curiosity together in these times where we can create a sense of shared empathy where we can allow each other to be sharing and have our experiences be welcome to have everything that we're feeling be totally okay and the number one thing i use for that is and i know it can be hard and i even find myself doing it sometimes too i, I did it in a session yesterday um is as we're hearing and listening to how people are truly feeling to put aside any impulse to figure it out or fix it any advice anything to make it better this can be so hard because we all know a lot and we all care a lot and so so many of us are trained to just jump in there as soon as someone shares exactly what they're experiencing no matter if it's pleasant or unpleasant to go oh my gosh i know something about that me too can i get this for you can i do that for you can have you considered this have you considered that and i just want to take a moment and have you imagine what it would be like if you were sharing something with a dear friend just imagine sharing exactly how you are in this moment if you're phenomenal or you're really hurting or you're somewhere in between what would it be like it if a friend simply listened and took a breath and either just reflected back to you what they said, oh wow, I'm really hearing that you are feeling super checked out and numb and you're binging on Netflix and you're feeling a little nervous about what's going on. Maybe I would reflect that to a friend. What would it be like to just receive a reflection? Just to start out with, instead of a, hey, you know what you could do instead? I have this 20 minute workout video. I've been loving it. You know, if you want to get off that Netflix, you can um, come for a walk with me, you know. And also, if you, <laughs> if you also want to try this cool online course, I'm doing that too. You know, does that have a different energy to it? You can comment in the chats, like what you notice in your body, the difference between, huh, I'm really hearing that this is what's going on for you. And then the next piece, which is 
I think I've actually advanced practice, which makes me pretty sad. It actually is one of the bigger grief points that I carry. Um, is the next piece is to say something so simple. Steal this from me. Use it with everyone. It will not sound contrived. To say it makes a lot of sense that you're feeling that way. It makes so much sense that you be binging on Netflix and feeling kind of numb and feeling nervous about the state of the world. Take a minute and notice how does that land as you hear me say that. And I know I'm saying it differently. Like there's different energy behind my responses. So this isn't a perfect experiment. But what would it be like to imagine living in a world where we share with each other, our beloveds, our family, our friends, our acquaintances, hey, this is what I'm feeling. And to be received with, I'm really hearing you, and whatever you're feeling makes sense. And then to either follow it up with the energy of, or even the words of whatever you're feeling is super welcome with me. You get to feel however you're feeling. And I'm right here with you. And I'm not going anywhere. I know that sounds very therapisty. I am a trained psychotherapist. But you know what? There's a reason we need therapists because if I mean I would love to be put out of a job if we could respond to each other <laughs> like this. Can you imagine right now in these times what it would be like to actually listen, to hear each other, to welcome the whole spectrum of feelings? It's actually easier. I'm going to let you in on a bit of a secret. <laughs> it's easier and it takes less energy than trying to figure out or fix it. It just takes a little bit of a willing to go through an uncomfortable period of when you're uncomfortable trying a new pattern on. And then you're going to go, why have I not always been doing this? I don't have to do anything besides listen with a connected heart and to just care. And from those places, then you can ask more questions. You can get more curious because you'll feel more connected. And that can foster genuine empathy. And you can even share that. You can note, you can share. As you shared that, I noticed this in my body. I noticed this in my heart. I noticed I really felt heavy when you said that. Oh. Yeah, and my heart feels sad. And I could use a different example right now. I shared with a friend this morning, you know, I am better than I've ever been in my life. I feel great. I feel full of gratitude. I feel grounded, supported, protected. So happy that I don't have pressure to make a bunch of plans and run a bunch of errands that I just get to be. And then they got to just be and celebrate with me. And maybe he was jealous. I don't know. <laughs> but instead of being jealous, we can just put those things aside and just give each other space to go, this is what, what you're experiencing, and I'm here with you in that. And that doesn't have to mean that I have to experience that too. So this gives all of us permission to feel everything we're feeling. <laughs> So the bottom line here that I really, really want to show up with, especially for folks with trauma, especially because there is collective trauma happening. Trauma is stress. Trauma is contraction. Trauma is feeling so overwhelmed that we um, are not going to be able to control something um, and to feel frightened even. Trauma can result in all these ways. There's a collective experience of this right now. And so as people are feeling this, as we're feeding them more advice, more things to do, some of the messages we're giving each other is stop feeling what you're feeling. Try this meditation practice. Try this yoga practice. Try this medicine. Try this uh, exercise. Try this whatever. Try this course. Try this group. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because of course I have a group and a course and a this and a that, but I'm not coming at people <laughs> like that. It's like you want to make sure that when you're offering these gorgeous things you offer each other, we, we want to make sure that it's not from a place of saying you're deficient, <laughs> what you're feeling needs to be different. 
we really want to remind people, especially folks with trauma, because most of them have been hearing their entire life that what they are feeling is wrong. And so this is an incredible opportunity to actually support folks with trauma by going, yes, bring it, give it all to me. Like, are you angry? Are you freaked out? Are you sad? Are you numb? Are you overjoyed? Are you whatever? And yes, that is so welcome with me. I want you to know you can feel everything you're feeling and it makes sense. So I'm seeing like tons and tons and tons of gorgeous supportive practices going across the internet and there's a way that they're being delivered in some really supportive ways that are just like hey if this is something that's been inspiring you for a long time now you've got time great check this out um but if there's any energy of stop feeling what you're feeling this will make you feel better i would put a really big question mark around that because the reality is I don't know that we necessarily need to feel better. <laughs> My experience is that if we can embrace what we're feeling, even if it's the depths of sorrow, if we can be there with a sense of kindness, curiosity, and care, if it's with ourselves, with another, that that depth of sorrow is the most important thing that is happening right now. And if we have permission to feel it, instead of check out, distract, try to do something else, we can find such great depths of freedom. This is part of what I've been learning right now about myself. I was feeling so much sorrow on Friday. I went to the grocery store and I just thought it was fine and then just think, felt collective just pain of people in the store just fretting. And then I went home and I went to the river in the middle of the night and just psh, sorrow, sorrow, sorrow. It wouldn't stop. It was hours and it was so painful. And it was the first time in my life, I guarantee you, <laughs> that I stopped and I was like, what if I could love this? What if I could tell myself that feeling the sorrow is the most important thing I could be doing right now, that it means something, it matters, that I am okay <laughs> feeling this sorrow, it's important. And in that moment, I felt lighter, I felt more connected to myself, I felt more free. And so what if we could do this for each other? It's okay if you're feeling what you're feeling, of course you're feeling what you're feeling. And then asking more, each other more questions. So I want to give you all permission to ask each other more questions because, oh my goodness, <laughs> so many people tiptoe when they know someone is struggling, especially, but if someone's doing really well too, um, to, to get in there with them, to be like, tell me more. What's that like for you? How can I support you? How can I celebrate you? How can I cry with you? How can I agree with you? What else do you want me to know about this? To ask a thousand questions. I know people don't want to pry and people don't feel like they don't want to make it worse. People don't know how to ask the perfect questions. Look, I don't know how to ask the perfect questions and I've been trained to ask those questions for over a decade. <laughs> ask anyways. This genuine curiosity is going to create a bigger, wider, safe space for people to feel like they can bring more of themselves. And you're going to find right away that you're going to come into connection just from this curiosity and being willing to be a little com uncomfortable or vulnerable trying something new. And I see all of you <laughs> that are here and I'm like, I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> I'm seeing your names pop up and I'm like, <laughs> Ugh, you already know this. I'm talking to like the serious, um, just like advanced practice crew. But you know what? I need to be reminded of this every day of my life, that what I am feeling makes sense, that it matters, and I do not need to fix it. I don't need to push it away. I don't need to shove it down. I don't need to distract. And then on top of that, I need to know that when I push it away and when I distract and when I shove it down and when I numb out, 
that that's okay too. <laughs> I need to know that it is all okay. Most people with trauma have heard their whole lives that what they're doing and how they are feeling could be changed and could be fixed and it could be so much better. And here is an opportunity to try something else and to just notice what happens. What happens in your own body? What happens in the connection between the two of you? What happens with uh, within, just looking at them? What happens with their posture, their breath? And then there's this other thing that we can do together, which I am just learning, and it's hilarious. I'm a four on the Enneagram, and I used to just be like, I only want to talk about serious things, and I only want to go deep. <laughs> Everything else is totally irrelevant. And now I'm learning about this thing called normalizing conversation <laughs> when we are having a lot of distress when we are so overwhelmed and the weight of the world is on our shoulders and we are in crisis essentially it we can't dig into this stuff it's too early it's too soon it's too fresh and so shifting gears really to just talk about the weather and talk about that latest netflix episode and talk about something really um, like uh, external, outside of the body. Like, yeah, how beautiful are these flowers? And can you smell them? And can we just hang out like this together? Like this thing out here, isn't it fabulous? And that is something I would have just murdered someone in the past. <laughs> because I would have been like, no, let's just keep digging into the black hole of pain. And there's something really regulating for us as human beings to take some breaths and to come out, to come out of the stuff that we're feeling and go, huh, yeah, check out the snow on the neighbor's roof. Yeah, yeah, did you see that cool car that drove by? You know, just... The day-to-day, -day. did you see that weird-looking person at the supermarket? Whatever. <laughs> it's okay to have some more light, normalizing conversations. It can actually be really regulating, and especially if you're, like, really deep in with someone and they're really kind of stuck there. It's like, okay, can you feel the texture of this beautiful pillow over here? Where'd you buy that? Oh yeah, I totally love that store. You know, just change, change the topic. That's great too. And I wanna read your comments for a minute. I've been talking and talking and talking. And as I'm pausing to read the comments, see if you can feel yourself sitting on the ground or on your chair or on the earth or your bed or wherever you are. Notice that thing in your room that you connected with in the beginning that felt comforting. See if you can feel your breath. And if you're up for it in the comments, I'd love to hear something that's felt impactful so far that you want to take with you today. Maybe something you already knew, something you just wanted to be reminded of. Hmm, so good to see how many people are here. Sharon, Stephanie, Dawn, Belinda. Hi, with all those exclamation points. Good to see you twice today. <laughs> yeah. And Sharon. Yeah, and Belinda shared that the normalizing conversation, she can really relate to that. Yeah, it's something that is a new trauma trick that I've learned, um, not through a training, but from my own therapist. <laughs> Yeah, and Sharon is sharing that she's allowing herself to feel what she needs with so much compassion. Light conversations have been key in regulating my nervous system. Hi, Tracy. Welcome. I've been seeing your gorgeous work out there in the world. I'm so glad you're here. So yeah, and sharing again, what, what's something that's impacted you so far that you want to take with you? And you're also welcome to chat, put in the chat, like, how are you feeling right now? What's happening in your body? What's it like to be together in this time for these last 25 minutes? And if anything goes, it's like, oh, I hate this, but this is awful. Everything you're saying is stupid. 
Uh, I love this. It feels good to be connected. I notice my belly is starting to soften, or I notice I'm getting all this energy in my body. Whatever it is, it's welcome. And Grace shared, I love the vision of being at the river at night. I spend a lot of time at them. Uh, sorry, it just popped up. I spent a lot of time at rivers, yet I've never have felt nervous being there at night. Strong feminine darkness in that story. Thank you. It was a really special, special moment. I didn't realize I would share it publicly <laughs> until I said it. But it was one of those moments where I was like, I get it. And all those things I've been hearing from my teachers, especially my Buddhist teachers for years, I'm like, oh, yeah, don't stop hating hating the pain, hating the sorrow, shoving it down. What if I could love this? If I could love this, I could love anything. And I felt some love in that moment and it felt revolutionary. And Kendra shared, I noticed that it's so much harder for me to allow my husband's experience the way I do my clients and friends. This feels like a beautiful reminder to extend it to him as well, as we're together 24 seven right now. I laughed Kendra because I can relate so hard. <laughs> I. I have like limitless depths of just wide open compassion and patience and absolute genuine love for my clients and curiosity. And <laughs> you get even like my close, closest friends in front of me and I'm like, can we watch Netflix? <laughs> you know? Like I, I really, this is a, something I'm intentionally cultivating because it feels so much better and i'm finding as i'm intentionally cultivating it with my people it feels so different wow amy michelle anderson welcome it's so good to see you here amy was my teacher in high school <laughs> 20 23 years ago 22. And todd is sharing my release of judgment of others and how they are processing this experience, feeling my compassion for myself and others exploding. <sighs> yeah, I'm taking a deep breath as I'm taking that in. Yeah, thank you, Todd. And Lindell saying, I appreciate you talking about simple, ordinary mindfulness. I got trauma triggered yesterday and I cried my eyes out last night. I'm doing dance classes and continuing to develop dance healing modality. I appreciate your video. I like your tone. It's all welcome. Yes. Oh, and I just want to say, you know, those of us who've been practicing mindfulness forever and who have trauma and who have been, who are even experts in the field, whatever that means, um, it's like, yeah, we still get triggered. Yeah, we still go into distress. We still feel really overwhelmed and it's like we have to come together into spaces where we get to be vulnerable and human it's like we are professionals and we're also really human and we should be allowed to fall apart and have it be welcome have it make sense have it be okay have everyone be like well of course you do <laughs> because you're human and there are a lot of people right now who are being held highly as professionals who are probably also really, really triggered and really hurting and really scared. And so the more we can welcome each other as professionals to go, you get to fall apart right now, always, forever. You get to go into distress, you get to shut down, you get to go numb. You're holding so many people right now. You get to be human. This is so important, yeah. And Tracy shared yesterday was pretty high anxiety, even with all my tools. Much better today. Thank you, Tracy. And welcome, Carmen and Soma. So reading your comments are just so grounding for me. And to me, this is an aspect of co-regulation. I mean, it's really tricky because you're only commenting. We're not seeing each other's bodies, but bringing each other's voices into the space to me feels... Like it's a way where we can genuinely connect. So keep sharing, please. I wanna share, let's see. I have my notes, I'm just checking them. Yeah, so some trauma responses to look out for in, in your loved ones and in the people you're caring for. And I wrote, 
the anxious ones can be a little obvious, you know, to be really highly activated, a lot of tension and a lot of worry. It's like, yes, you might be having a traumatic response or getting an old trauma response trigger. And that is something that we can care about. And to extend that circle of care to folks who, who are fine. <laughs> fine like to, to, for me i feel good i feel grounded i feel supported i feel stable but folks who are fine there's something that feels a little like there's not so much aliveness in it there's not so much breath in it and i think you know what i'm talking about we've all been fine <laughs> and so to really watch out for those people and to really foster that genuine sense of curiosity can go so well and to really really give them space often they're the ones that are holding others together and they've really learned that they have to be fine and that there is no other space for them so to really kind of like check in on them hey how you doing tell me no for real what's going on in your heart and, and maybe they won't share much but just to feel like there's a shoulder for them to lean on can can make an impact and can help them feel a little less alone in that fine bubble. Other folks might be really just kind of lethargic, heavy, tired, needing a lot of rest, a lot of naps, maybe not taking those rests and naps and just pushing through, but it can feel pretty heavy and hard. And um, you might feel a sense of that in your own body as you're around them, just heavy, hard. And so it's like, okay, how can we get curious with them? How can we create some comfort for them to genuinely rest? To, I don't, I'm fear, I'm worrying that my internet is funky. Can you put in the chat if it's cutting in and out? It seems to be doing some weird things. Is it coming through to you all okay? Okay, I am fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> okay, it's good. My computer is melting down and I'm getting really warm, so I was worried. <laughs> so I'd love to hear from you all. I'm looking at this list of experts. What are some other uh, kind of things that we're looking for when folks might either be in a trauma response or be carrying trauma from the past and being extra? weighted by the added stress right now um people in a fight or like in this constant like criticism everything is wrong uh constantly just criticizing themselves having a lot of like ugh, intense energy a lot of tension in their upper body and their arms they might be really really scared underneath the surface let's see what others have said yeah flight that's the busyness the people that just can't stop the people that are just going 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 right now filling up their time with the projects and the to-do lists and getting everything perfect this can be a form of flight like i'm just taking off i don't want to feel this i can't feel this i'm just going to keep in motion and um, there's another interview that was posted from me on my page earlier today. And I talked about fawn, and fawn isn't one that I actually really used to talk about much, but it's one where we like kind of cozy up to each other and we're, we're kind of walking on eggshells a bunch because we're, we're pleasing each other. And I'm guessing there are a lot of people trapped in houses together right now that are doing some of that. Where we're trying to make everything okay all the time. We're not trying to push buttons. We're trying to make friends. We're making each other cookies and doing really sweet things. And But it, there's kind of tension there. And that can be a signal of like, oh, something deeper might be going on. This person might be really afraid that they might be stuck in a situation with someone that doesn't like them or will reject them or abandon them or hurt them. And so fawn is something really interesting to look out for. If someone's being overly pleasing and attentive. Um, and let's see, Dawn said, if someone is in avoidance and, huh, I'm not sure what you're writing. Can you write that again, Dawn, so I understand what you're saying? 
So it's not that we need to be recognizing people's trauma responses all of the time so that we can manage it for them. It's not our responsibility to do that. It's each person's responsibility to manage their own. However, it can foster a bit of compassion and patience and maybe feeling like you can come back to yourself a bit more. And we're like, hmm, I wonder if what might be going on for that person right now is that the stress in the environment or the world is creating uh, a trigger of past trauma in, the, in their body and they're playing that out right now because it's hitting that part of them that isn't actually sure they're gonna be okay. It's hitting that part that feels frightened or like something really bad could go on. And then they're coping in a way that probably doesn't make much sense and might suck a little bit for you <laughs> and the people around them. But it can, it can give us a little information that we can also remember. The number one thing we do when we're aware we have folks in our environment that may have trauma and it's getting triggered is we regulate ourselves. So let's take a moment together to take a few breaths. Yeah. And you might, if it feels good to you, place a hand on your heart or your belly or both. Just see if you can feel your hands resting there. And notice if you can feel your chair or whatever's behind you coming up to meet you. Same with whatever's beneath you. Feel that coming up to support you. And then you can look around a bit if that feels okay. For some people, it makes them a bit activated and some people it soothes them. So you can notice what happens for you today. And just notice if there's something in your space that feels supportive or comfortable to look at. Maybe take a few breaths with whatever you find. And then I just noticed my body just naturally started kind of wiggling. <laughs> and you can see if your body has any impulse to move in any particular way. Hi, Lori. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. And know that any movement that your body wants to do is exactly that movement so that's supposed to happen. It could be total stillness. It could be like massive, huge jumps. <laughs> let's just take some time here so let's know that we're all kind of in this together imagine we're in a big circle of 17 people at the moment just giving our bodies some space to just move anything and if you're not used to doing this it can feel totally awkward and it's cool to feel awkward these days I think that was made in Portland or something <laughs> That's where I'm from. And then what I'm going to have you do is just see. You're, you're muted. Maybe you're in a place where you feel comfortable doing this. Is there any sounds that your body wants to make? It could be anything. It could be the ugliest sound you've ever heard and the, or the most beautiful or anything in between. Let's see if you can make those sounds all the way from the bottom of your feet or the bottom of your belly. <sighs> yeah, Whew. got a lot of heat in my face on that one. Yeah. Whew. So let's spend another minute just letting your body do whatever it wants. Continuing to sound if you can, if you're in a space where it feels safe enough to do that. And you can play. You don't have to make the right sound. Try making the wrong sound. 
make the movement that maybe feels extra awkward. And if it feels better to be still, be still, own whatever you're doing. It's all exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Hi, Emma and Mark and Addie. Yeah, so the last part of just having a moment listening to our, our bodies and letting the sound that wants to come, come, is maybe notice if anything feels good about those movements or those sounds. If anything feels pleasant, or even if it just doesn't hurt, that can be great. Take a minute, just let it feel okay. And you can even bring some extra soothing into your face or your head, your body. And I can feel really grounding. I'm gonna press, press on your legs. And maybe in these last couple of minutes of this kind of practice, something you felt really connected to that felt supportive, and maybe something's like, nope, that doesn't work for me. If there's something that felt supportive or beneficial, feel free to enter that in the chat. I'd love to know what's working for you. What feels like oh, your body's like, yeah, I feel nourished by that. I, I want that. That feels really good. And know that you never have to feel really good. And that's not a requirement here. Let's see what people write. And as you're writing, I'm going to transition a little bit into, um, let's see. There is a, oh, I'm trying to decide because there's a great question that somebody left, and I'd love also to hear your questions. And, um, Yeah, I'm gonna go with the question. It's a really good one. And I know a lot of you are helping um, helping professionals, whether you're wellness providers or coaches, counselors, meditation teachers, breath work facilitators. And I love this question because it's so relevant in these times. It's so relevant. And she asked, I'm trying to, I'm pausing because I had meant to post it so I could read it, but I, I'm trying to remember it because I forgot to write it to myself. It was something like in these times when folks are experiencing active crisis, feeling just really in a lot of distress and having a ton of grief come through, is it appropriate to be really helping them process it through? And my gut sense when I read that, my first thought was no. My first thought was we, when we're supporting folks in active crisis who are just overwhelmed with distress and really triggered and really, really unable to be right here and right now in the present moment, for me, the number one first priority is helping them resource, helping them find some part of them that can come into the present moment and just be here. <laughs> and in my, I know a lot of you are in creating safer space. So in, in my course, there's a lot of examples for that kind of resourcing and how we can help bring some people into resourcing because that is gold. That's like the number one fastest route to healing and, and really being able to process later if needed. But when someone is really actively, actively overwhelmed and they're still in it, they're still in the event, we can't do the processing yet. It's too soon, it's too fresh, it's still alive in their system. But what we can do is help them find center, find ground, lean into their support in their own body, maybe, in their wider circle of community, maybe, if they have that. With us, we can, we can do that, obviously. And so what resource means is 
something that we can tap into either in our own bodies, our environments, or in our wider networks, circles of support <coughs> that helps us feel comfortable and supportive. It brings us more into ground and center. So for me right now, in this moment, if, if I was really, really distressed and I was helping support myself through that, I would just take a moment and have me look around. We've done this a few times today. Just look around and I, I would get a sense of like, is this creating more activation or less? Because it could go either way. But it, this is all an experiment. This is all an experiment. For me, this just brings me out of the black hole looping of distress. And then once my system settles a bit, might have a little normalizing conversation, make a few jokes. Careful with that one, that can feel really dismissive. So you have to have the right rapport with whoever you're with. And then I might have them place a hand on their heart or their belly, if they're willing, always ask their permission and see if it would be something that feels good. And just notice if there is anything in their experience that they can connect with that feels okay. It might be a little finger, a, a tiny toe, maybe the feeling of their hand on their body. And for some people it's like, oh, no, that's too much. <laughs> it might be, we've got to get up, we got to go for a walk. We're going to breathe some fresh air or we're going to walk around the house. The resource might be the togetherness, letting them know we are in this together and we're in this all the way through to the end. What you're feeling is totally welcome. And I really wanna make sure that I can be present with you as you're feeling this and that you can be present with you. And so we gather their resources. We help them find ground and center as much as we can. And then after their support feels really bolstered and we're really sure they know how to stay one foot on land, one foot in present moment, then we can help them process the, the grief and the pain and the distress. But right now, it's really this bolstering. It's where's the support? Where's the community? Where's the connection? Where's the us? And that can include me with my pet, me with a tree, <laughs> you know, to remember not all of us have a community or partners or people we feel like we really have on our side and so it's like okay where is it can we find something that feels like it can really be something you can lean into a tree a pet a cozy space a warm cup of tea something like that so those are all examples of resources that can be super super grounding but i hope that really answers your question it can be so compelling when people are in big trauma responses to want to get in there and figure it out and fix it and if there's one thing that you leave this call with today i want you to know that when we get in there and try to figure it out and fix it and give advice which like bless all of our hearts that's what we've been so programmed to do especially in the west and especially especially a lot of male identified folks get a lot of um like su not support but what is that it's like encouragement like to feel useful and helpful in that way and so it's like okay we have to re restructure this because folks with trauma their whole lives have most likely been told let's fix you let's fix this something wrong with you something wrong with how you feel what you're feeling isn't right, let's change it. So when we can start going, huh, it makes so much sense that you feel this way. What you're feeling is welcome. Tell me more. Not necessarily tell me the whole distressing story, but just tell me how you are. What's it like to be with me right now? What's it like to be here right now? That can foster so much connection and care that can be genuinely naturally healing. Hi, Carrie. Bye, Carrie. Have a great day. <laughs> I saw her text or her chat. And Julia, welcome. It's so good to see you. So I'm already over time. And um, <laughs> if you've been in my course, you would know I'm such a huge advocate of doing what you say you're going to do. And I said I'd be here for like, I don't know, 35, 45 minutes. But since I'm not sitting in here with in a paid session with you and 
we're not doing deep trauma healing. I am just going to stay for a bit longer and see what kind of uh, questions that you have to say because I want to, I'm here, I want to be of support. I know there might be folks here who disagree with some things I'm saying, like bring your opinions. I want to know. I want to be in this dialogue together. I want to know what's working, what's not working. What did I miss? I missed a thousand things, I'm sure. And I'm hoping what I have said so far brings some sense of connection, something that helps you feel at least like I've got your back. <laughs> Because I do, and I really, I really want us to have each other's backs in this time. I'm hoping folks have questions. And you know what I realized yesterday? I was like, I'm not, I wasn't planning on doing this till fall, but a lot of facilitators, yoga teachers, coaches, therapists, um, breathwork facilitators, have been texting me, or not texting me, tagging me lately, and tagging my course in this intense time, just telling people like, this is the work, this is the work, this is the work, and I'm so grateful because I do believe it is too, and it is my activism, and so I'm gonna give you, you guys, I mean, I think most of you are in the course, but just, I'm gonna put it out to the world this week, like anyone who wants this course for 40% off, it's like, you can have it. I want you to have it. I want this to go around the world. I want people to really be deeply connecting with each other and understanding when we're facilitating that there are really special ways that we need to be holding folks with trauma, who is pretty much everyone. So if you're not in that course and you want to be, now is the time for so many reasons, but also because I'm going to give you a 40% off thing. And I have been seeing the benefits of it and it has been such a, a gift and an honor to get to understand. And if you're in the course and you want to put something in the chat about what your experience has been of it, I would be incredibly grateful. And here, I'll just put the, the um, discount code in the comments too. But let me just also see what you're writing in the comments. Okay, so Dawn shared what what is what it has done for me is I found that I had much deeper emotions going on than I realized. Oh, Whew. and they are very welcome, and they make sense. And Kendra. This feels like a tall glass of water to my system right now, both personally and professionally. I really appreciate you saying that. And you know, every time you share, I feel the same way right in return. <laughs> so I'm glad we're in connection. Yeah. And Dawn shared, thanks for opening up new feelings to awaken. And Belinda, thank new. I think she said thank you. <laughs> Needed to be doing this course with you. Transformational for me. So, so grateful as I'm using these skills with clients and my friends and my family. And Dawn, I love the course, and it has been so healing for me. That's the thing, it's like, we gotta do our healing, and part of this is, part of this is like, rewiring how we learn how to communicate, which is usually out of survival. And so our piece is like being willing to be uncomfortable and try some new things, which, especially with our friends and family and communities, which can sometimes be the most vulnerable thing is, uh, oh, well, <laughs> I lost my words, most vulnerable thing that we can do. And um, as professionals, we're so protected. You know, we get to hide, we get to not be that vulnerable sometimes. I mean, I. All, I mean, I cry with my clients. It is vulnerable in certain ways, but we also, the finger isn't usually going this way so much. And so we have to be practicing this outside of our professional lives too. That's just gonna help us more and more in our professional lives. It goes both ways. And Julia shared, Shelby's course is amazing. Thank 
though Avi, if you're tuning on this live, you know what she shares and teaches is potent, honoring, and so, so helpful. Thank you so much, Julia. I feel the same way about the work that you're offering. Elizabeth, welcome. We are almost completed for today. And Carol, I love this way of showing up in this time. The internet has felt super noisy. I haven't felt sure of my role to play. Showing up coming from a place of everything you're feeling is welcome and okay, resonates in my body. I can do this. You can do this. So just one more, just touching in before we end today into presence, into ourselves. And just sharing. Maybe, let's see, I'd love to have you keep sharing with each other because I just feel like it's so helpful to know where we're all at. If you could share three sentences or three words, body sensations, present moment experience, and it can be really anything, just like we started. What is real for you right now? What is the most real thing you could share? Three sentences or three words. And again, if you want to share where you are in the world, I love knowing these things. I mean, we have a super worldwide worldwide crew right now. It's really, really beautiful. Hi, Irina. Good to see you. And Dawn shared about creating safer space, having given me so much, so many beautiful ways to connect to clients. So helpful and useful. So good to have you there. And Dawn shared she's feeling lightness right now. Let me see, I'll check in with myself. What am I feeling? I'm feeling really grateful. Really grateful to know there are people in the world who care this much to show up, to hear about how to foster genuine empathy and connection in these times, because I feel like we have a real opportunity right now to do that, to really connect with each other in a different way. So thank you so much. So gratitude, I'm feeling that. I'm feeling my heart and solar plexus just, it feels like, you know those hourglass things with sand? It feels like the sand is just kind of lovingly filtering down toward, through my belly and like into the base of my body, going back into the earth, feeling the support there. Mmm, and I see these absolutely gorgeous flowers that smell amazing. Do you want to smell them? <laughs> I love these flowers. They make me so happy. They're a resource for me. Obviously, I love flowers. And Dawn shared, clearing of my mind. Julia, feeling revved up, purposeful, a bit tired, and in need of rest. Very grateful. Lots of love glowing in my heart, tuning in from Los Angeles. Yeah. So nice to know how you two are doing. Sarah. Sarah shared deeper breath, connection, and supported. Yeah. So we've been here together for an hour. I'm going to sign off. I hope that it has been, uh, this has been somehow supportive to you. I hope you've gained one thing that feels impactful that you want to take with you that you can bring into your life right here, right now, either for yourself, for your own nervous system and heart, and for or for the people around you. I always love to know the impact of what I'm sharing, so please let me know in the comments or send me a message or an email. And again, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open the Creating Safer Space for 40% off for these two weeks because I really, I've been just getting so many people interested and I know that people are, people's financial circumstances are a little interesting at the moment. Some are fine and some maybe not so fine. And so I just know that with so many people interested, I wanted to do what I could to really support this continued connection and grounding and being with each other in a trauma-aware way. So if you want to be a part of it, the link is somewhere in those comments and I'll post it again somewhere else so that you can find it or you can always reach out to me. It would be an honor to have you have a beautiful night or day. I know some of you are over there earlier than I am. So 
it's such a it's such an honor to be with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being part of this show and being part of this love revolution. If you love this podcast, please share it with your people and leave a five-star review so that we can get the word out. If you're a practitioner or on your own healing journey, head on over and check out creatingsaferspace.com, which is one of my passion projects and is open for enrollment now. You'll get access to it the moment you sign up. Or join my mailing list for all sorts of revolutionary love and trauma-aware support at shelby-lee.com. See you next episode.